Welcome to Behavioral Health in the New Normal, a podcast developed by Prestige Community Resources, aimed at bringing healing back to our community through knowledge, expert advice, and positive messaging. The show is a joint venture between the Department of Behavioral Health and Prestige Community Resources, funded by SAMHSA in response to the challenges currently impacting our communities. Hosted by Paul Wells Sr., who uses over 30 years of extensive clinical social work experience to conduct insightful interviews with experts and professionals on a wide range of topics that impact the Washington, D.C. community. From behavioral health crisis to education to financial hardship and anything in between, this show will provide information and insights that will surely make a difference in your life. I want to welcome everyone back to uh, Prestige's a podcast entitled Behavioral Health in the New Norm. Oh, my goodness, family. I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, we're going to have some uh, real good discussion. Uh, and, and the topic today is really the impact or effects of COVID. And we're going to call this the Millennial Edition. Our guest today is Brother Miles. Right, he's uh, from Chicago. I understand he's a 20 year old artist, photographer, and creative director. Born and raised in Chicago, who now resides in the DMV and is actively working with local businesses and organizations using his creative skills as leverage with organizations by creating a brand identity, campaign strategy, etc. 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 Uh, he spends most of his time as a freelance photographer and artist. You can catch him anytime documenting a handful of events from weddings, family gatherings, to sporting events, and editorial photography. Brother Miles, we're so honored to have you. How are you this morning? I'm feeling good. I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited for what we're about to talk about. I'm yes, really yes. Uh, you told me, I understand, you're in Chicago at the present time, huh? Yes, I'm currently in Chicago, yeah. All right, all right. And you understand it's cold in the Windy City today. It is very cold right now. <laughs> we appreciate I'm all right, you. I'm going for it. Good, good. So so tell tell us, Miles, a little bit about how you grew up, a little bit about your education. And uh, we really are interested to hear how you made it to Washington, DC. I was born and raised in Chicago. Um, I lived here up until eighth grade, up until which I moved to Maryland where my dad lived. So um I was, I was staying here with my mom and my brother. And once I moved to Maryland, it was kind of like a, I don't, I don't want to say like a culture shock, but I didn't really have any friends. I didn't know anybody. I didn't talk like everybody, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of fell into photography. Somehow, like my father, he's a photographer, but I was always around it, but it was never something that was forced upon me or anything. So I kind of just took a, a natural take into it. I started taking pictures every day just editing, going back, just working on that, not really having friends, just walking around, taking pictures in my neighborhood. Yeah. And um, that was the start of me going to high school. So once I started doing that a little bit more, I started bringing it to school. People would like my work. I would shoot for um, like the modeling team, the basketball team, just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. While also um, like taking art courses and stuff. So yeah. everything kind of just, it was really natural. It wasn't forced. I didn't really have a, a plan to really do it. It just kind of fell into my lap. After I graduated high school, I pretty much just been doing photography and video, just pretty much full time as a freelance. So seeing where my opportunities can go, seeing who I can connect with, who I can network with, pretty much. It's, it's been pretty good, though. It's been well. So um, Absolutely. Well, I definitely appreciate uh, moving from a northern city down here to the a DMV area. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. native of Buffalo, New York. And in fact, okay. before leaving Buffalo, I thought it snowed everywhere. <laughs> you did in Buffalo. And so when nah. I came to DMV and, you know, was um, greeted with this little bit of snow that, you know, was shut down the city, I was like, oh my God, I was just about to say, they, they freak out when it snows. Just I'm a little bit. It's not even real snow. Yeah, that's right. So, so Maj, you know, the, the backdrop right now for us is this pandemic. It's definitely impacting all elements of life. And so mm -hmm. could you share with us uh, how COVID-19 has affected you directly and your family? COVID has definitely, before I say anything, COVID has affected the world in so many ways and kind of just put people in a new position that nobody really expected to be in. So I can say for me, I was working a job at Carhartt at the National Harbor. Yeah, so sure. um, um, I was doing that. 
But once the pandemic hit, people got laid off and furloughed and stuff like that. And it was kind of interesting because that was when I first started doing video. Like I had a, um, like I was taking pictures and doing all that stuff. But I was really just trying to get in the video for whatever reason. I just felt like I needed a video camera. So mm-hmm. um, I bought a camera maybe like a few months before the pandemic happened. Okay. And then I was I was getting clients. I was getting booked. Like things were going really well. And they still are. But I was going to work at the same time. So I was kind of juggling right. both of those back and forth. And I remember telling my so like I just need a month to just do video just to see like see how how well I can go literally I want to say two days later like my job okay. kind of let us know like we're going to shut down and all that so I was getting paid for a couple of weeks but then that kind of stopped so um I was just full-fledged like creative director and all that stuff so honestly beforehand I always had a job somewhere doing like something part-time just honestly anything just helping out just to balance out but um once that happened, it was like I was just on my own. And that first month, I did like amazing. It was, it was, it didn't really make sense. It was weird. It's kind of like I asked for something, and it actually came about in the in the wildest way. So, um, I think that was probably the most impactful thing that the pandemic is is really like. So I imagine me. that when you when you were uh, terminated from from the job. Uh, you worked almost exclusively in the house. You, you had limited movement. I imagine you were somewhat isolated, uh, minimal minimal contact with others unless it was in the professional uh, uh, function. Uh, how, mm-hmm. how did that impact you? How did it impact your creativity? How did it impact your mental health being so isolated for such a long period of time? Honestly, it built like, um, I felt like I, I gained a new understanding of like productivity and like mm-hmm. self-awareness with just waking up and trying to challenge myself and just make things happen. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel, I didn't feel excessively um, isolated or like alone per se, simply just because of the tools that we have at hand. Okay. With, um, social media and stuff like that. So that was, I want to say like going back and forth from like calls and FaceTime and all that while being in the house is kind of like, man, I just, when I go to, your, go to your house, you know what I'm saying? We can just edit it and stuff like right. that. But um, sometimes that wasn't the case. Um, if anything, if I wasn't by myself in my house editing, mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. go to somebody who was like, well, and we would just like sit in the basement and just work and edit just so I could just like, talk to somebody and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. So um, I think it, it built this locked in mentality for me. Like just go in, just knock it out, stay in there, just, just keep working. Like it's, it wasn't it wasn't too hard for me to do that beforehand, but I really felt the um, I felt the pressure kind of move away from me once the pandemic happened because it just slowed everything down in a way. And slowing down isn't really a bad thing sometimes. No, no. It sounds like it actually enhanced your focus. It uh, and it gave it, and it gave you a newfound drive that was independent of other influences and other and external motivations. Absolutely. Um, and so I definitely appreciate that you had to make some adjustments um, regarding your work, uh, but the focus actually uh, enhanced, uh, I'm sure, your creativity, Mm -hmm. uh, your product, your outcomes in your products. Uh, And what I found in my work is it actually also enhanced the relationships with the few people that I did maintain contact with. Mm -hmm. Miles, you said something interesting. You said that you would sometimes uh, work out of the location where other people with other people who you knew were well how did you know they were well oh they would test positive i mean they would test negative okay so there were all um, the only instances where you would work with someone out else outside of your household you had to confirm that they were, were had already tested negative yeah in the sense of like um in the sense of like me going over there to just like edit and talk a little bit stuff like that yeah. Um, like when I was shooting, like when I would be in the house and I have a job, um, I was always like following the standard guidelines. Like I'm the photographer. I don't really need to touch anybody or anything. I always right. wear my mask and stuff like that. So okay. um, have you been tested? Was, have you tested yes, for COVID-19? Uh, mm-hmm. And what was that experience like for you? Uh, the first time it was weird. Now it's, it's regular. Uh, okay. I've been tested maybe like four or five times. It doesn't bother me now. Okay. Very All good. negative. All, All right. healthy. And, and what about but the fam, your family you live with? Have they all been tested in your household? I think my mom has been tested once or twice. Um, 
my brother probably has been tested, but we've all been we've all been well. Yes, so. yes. I'm I'm so glad to hear that. So, brother Miles, you're a young adult, uh, and I, I definitely appreciate your perspective and and the momentum you're gaining gaining through your experiences. Uh, can you speak to how the what the pandemic looks like for your peers, just kind of across mm -hmm. the board generally? You know, that group of 20 to 30 year olds, how is it impacting them? It's interesting because I've always tried to surround myself with people who had something to do mm -hmm. like for themselves. So right. like really had their own lane. So um, I feel like those relationships with people that I've been having have gotten stronger. But then I see friends that I don't want to say don't have a purpose because I can't I can't say that, you know, but. Right who aren't actively pursuing something, yeah, yeah. I see them kind of take it as a, not a joke, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can, they want to do anything. Like they can do pretty much anything they want. You know, like, right. they're not working as much as they were mm -hmm. for the stuff that's open. They're going to go to it when, you know, like they don't want to go to the club, want to do this, want to do that. So um, I've been seeing a lot of that, honestly, but I know a lot of people that have like, cut ties with people from not talking or right. stuff like that. I've, I've honestly heard a lot of that, like people just saying, um, the people that I thought were really close to me, this pandemic has shown me that we're not yeah. and stuff like that. But right. right. But it's kind of subjective, I feel, but yeah. It, you know, I imagine that if uh, you're a young adult and you were unfocused prior to the pandemic, um, now that we're fully into this, uh, this experience, you're probably even more unfocused because you never had an agenda in the first place. And, and so it's actually the opposite of what you suggested, uh, which is your reality, that you were already focused on your, you had a vision for yourself. And the pandemic actually enhanced your focus because you now were required to work independent of any mm -hmm. other external motivation. I, you know, I see a lot of young adults and I, I, I talk to them frequently and I, I'm not sure if everyone takes this seriously. Oh, I still, absolutely. I, I see young adults still not wearing masks. That's what I was about to say. A, a lot of people think, a lot of black people still think they can't get it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, it's like a lot of black people still feel like it's a non-black thing and stuff like that. But it just shows the lack of information and awareness, especially in Maryland, which is also an experience that I've realized is like, like I'm born and raised in Chicago. I'm, I'm like used to the city atmosphere in a way but mm -hmm. i do know that like in maryland there's this level of seclusion that everybody kind of earns based off of like just how the houses are built all the houses are spaced out people live in these big subdivisions don't know their neighbors don't talk to them or anything like right. that so i just know that the social the social dynamics are just totally different in maryland so i i see that people are just either ill-informed or just unaware just completely unaware of what's going on around them. And then people just don't care. People think they live out the way in Waldorf or wherever they live. They think mm -hmm. that the virus isn't serious or things won't happen to them, but it's that's getting right. everybody. That's everybody right. getting that's, that's, that's been my experience. I've seen that. Um, have you, do you know anyone who's tested positive for COVID-19? Yeah, I know a few people. Do you know anyone who's become seriously ill as a result of contracting the virus not really i know some people that that like had to quarantine and quarantine was rough okay but, um well i could say yeah i know somebody that was that was pretty down bad from it yeah i do and what was that experience like for them as you recall it? well it was, first off it was the no taste no smell and mm -hmm. it was the and it was a strong sense of um lethargy very tired like yeah. extremely drained um the exhausted breathing and stuff like that just okay. for like maybe a week or so okay but then after that kind of recovering slowly and stuff like that i know somebody that was protesting got grabbed by the police unlawfully went to jail and caught covid like mm -hmm. from going to jail and stuff like that so he was kind of dealing with that for a little bit of time he's perfectly fine now he's good he's negative and all that but yeah. that's kind of the, the things that i've, that I've uh, experienced yeah was that uh that person you described, uh, the first person you described, what, what did we having regular contact with that person? Why the symptoms were were going through their cycle? I mean, were you 
FaceTiming? Were you oh, FaceTime? Yeah, because I was I was in Maryland. They were in Chicago while this was happening. So maybe like FaceTime, text, group chat. Do you do you know of anyone personally who's died as a result of the virus? Not directly, but I do know um, like mutually. This um this young lady I know one of her family members passed away from COVID. Yeah. And how did she respond to that? You know, it really affected her off of the strength of how things happened because a few of her family members caught it at a gathering. So it was kind of it was kind of weird because they were kind of rolling the dice a little bit because it was a group of people. Ultimately, that group of people did catch COVID. Like most of them, people were trying to see like who's going to get it the worst. Who do we need to you know take care? Of? And then ultimately, somebody passed away. So. Uh, I knew that was really hard on her. It was it was interesting because I knew that it was very difficult for her to grieve simply off the fact that this is is very new in a way. But yeah. at the same time, viruses and illnesses, they all they're I can't say they're all common, but when people get sick, it's like, okay, I know he's sick. I know that he's been dealing with something for a while, but mm -hmm. COVID pretty much just popped up last year, you know? That's right. So That's it's right. Pretty, it's pretty much like a it's it kind of blindsided her in a way. And I really felt for her in that situation, yeah. but I knew it was it was kind of difficult for her to just. It's not it's not a regular mourning process. There's no funeral, you know. There's mm -hmm. no pass stuff like that. Well, there yeah. is, but it's it's very limited, you know. So, so the grieving process is just much more complicated because some of these more formal uh, steps in in the grieving process have been adjusted and modified. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're absolutely right. You know, Miles, I have a 19 year old son, and when the pandemic first hit, of course. Uh, he had to modify his movement. You know, he's a college student, so he went into mm -hmm. remote learning, distant learning, mm -hmm. and um, he had to really regulate uh, his social activity, and I felt bad Absolutely. for him. And, and in fact, I, I unfortunately, I think I placed some demands on him because my fear for him was not that he wouldn't be able to um, manage uh, the illness if he contracted it, but I was concerned about my health and that of his mother. Absolutely. And so, matter of fact, that's the only way I really got his attention because I think in the beginning, he still wanted to conduct his life as if, you know, it, there was no risk. But when I highlighted the fact that he potentially can infect his parents, that's when he made the shift. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a remarkable shift. Uh, but I've also watched him struggle with the limited social time that he has outside of the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this vaccine, man? I don't know. By no means are you going to take it. I've had some history with vaccines uh, with my health. Um, I won't get too specific, but it's just something that I'm not going to do. Right. Um, just from previous health experiences with vaccines and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I'm, I'm not downplaying um, medical professional health at all, but I'm just personally not comfortable with the vaccine. Right. What are, what are, what are your, your, your associates uh, or your peers, kind of, what are you hearing amongst amongst them? Do they plan to take the vaccine? A lot of people are saying they're not trying to take it, honestly, from what I've experienced. I, I wouldn't lie to you. But um, right. I know that um, a few people's jobs are trying to force them to take it. And that's mm -hmm. a little bit of a conflict. They're like, ah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not taking it. Yeah. They will have uh, to fire me. That, that, that mandated approach, I'm not sure how that's going to pan out, and I'm very uncomfortable yeah. with that as well. Um, but I expect in certain segments of the workplace, they, they may place some demands on employees to, Absolutely. to be, be vaccinated, uh, particularly in the healthcare settings and maybe other settings where there's direct uh, client contact. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I, you know, I tell you, uh, we've seen in behavioral health uh, and in mental health clinics, uh, uh, a dramatic increase in intakes for anxiety disorders, mood disorders, uh, and substance use problems. Now, let's talk about young folks and substance use. Uh, do you think this COVID-19 experiences have uh, influenced or increased drug use amongst young adults? Yes, I think so. Yeah, and, and so we've been hearing that, you, you know, because of the isolation, uh, people are much more prone to kind of be home all day and they're smoking weed and they're consuming alcohol. And uh, mm -hmm. that just kind of increases and intensifies with time. So that's been your experience. Mm -hmm. You kind of seeing that amongst young adults? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. 
Um, what about the mental health piece? Have you or heard or witnessed uh, some of your peers and associates uh, expressing uh, depression and anxiety related to yes. the pandemic? Yes, um, I can say there's something about our generation right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have meme culture, which is like our way of being passive with what, like with the current historical events that are happening like yes. daily, especially in 2020, right. as young people trying to like sprout out while also living in the midst of this, we have this sense of um, sarcasm in a way mm. to like kind of cope. But it's like another day in the pandemic, it's weird. It's it's so yeah. weird. It's like we all hate it. Like we all hate this. We all want to hang out. We all want to just do something. So it's like, um, I know that like the there's this this comical aspect of like the suffering that we're going through. Right. Like right. The, the detachment that we're experiencing, the isolation and stuff like that. I don't I don't um I don't doubt that you guys have had an influx in like people yeah. coming in for anxiety, depression, and stuff like that, because it's real. And then you also have to consider that people are at home all the time and home isn't always the the best space for people you know absolutely so um dealing with that you know you gotta you got an issue with your mom you don't have a job you're just at home you don't really have enough money to be anywhere else to know where to go you know like that causes tension things like that so just the whole dynamics of of uh being in the house and, and dealing with the issues in the house is is definitely something that i feel like people have been dealing with but for the young people, some people think it's a joke. Some people joke about it from a distance, but then right. some people are just out here. You know, I really appreciate your awareness and sensitivity to how seclusion can influence uh, domestic problems within the house. Mm -hmm. and in fact, we're, we're getting increased reports of domestic violence. Absolutely. Uh, and I can imagine if, if I'm a victim or if I'm in a domestic relationship prior to the pandemic, what might that experience be like now that I'm actually secluded and kind of uh, trapped in this household with a perpetrator mm -hmm. yep. uh, with limited options in terms of where I can go? Uh, we've talked to a lot of students who've talked about the negative impact the isolation has had on their family dynamic and their relationships with, with their parents uh, that are real, just as you described, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in these four walls all day with the same person and we know it. There's nagging and complaints and conflict uh, that aren't readily resolved because I can't walk out of the space. I can't just leave because I have nowhere to go and it's safe. So, you know, when, when I was growing up, and I still think this is the status quo today with African Americans, uh, we often would normalize things that weren't really normal, right? Oh, absolutely. We didn't, we didn't really uh, identify our emotional pain and talk about it. Um, we knew that people in our community were suffering with severe, sometimes mental illness. And mm -hmm. we kind of just, you know, normalized it and uh, almost really didn't, didn't acknowledge it. And yeah, I was about to say, it, it didn't even feel like we were normalizing it. So we just didn't do anything. Right, didn't do anything. And I think that still continues today that uh, young adults are walking around with all kinds of feelings. And I'm not sure if we adequately identify them, address them or seek treatment to reconcile some of the, the challenges they might have emotionally. Would you ever consider receiving mental health services if it was needed? Yes, yes. I, I honestly want to do it casually. Like, I wouldn't mind just doing it casually. Um, I do know that, like, I would, I would definitely do that casually. Not saying that, like, I don't have issues that I feel like are serious, but... Right. I, I well, mind well, that. well, let me be the judge of that. Right. Since I'm a licensed <laughs> psychotherapist. We'll, exactly. we'll talk offline to see how I assess you. No, but I agree with you. Um, and I support you. And if you just want to go through your journey of reflection and self-assessment, and mm -hmm. we all need to reconcile some experience that we've had. Absolutely. Um, um, and us living in an urban context also, you know, we, we have been subjected to things that aren't quite labeled normal. At all. Mm -hmm. At all. Absolutely. Listen, is there any words of encouragement you can give our listeners concerning this pandemic? Is there any words of hope uh, that you can offer young adults at this time? Stay self-aware, man. Self-awareness is, 
that's the the pathway to a lot of things. It, it's a pathway to a, a lot of things and um, self care. It doesn't have to be as celebrated as it is. Like you shouldn't mm-hmm. have to have a self care day. You know, like right, right. you should try to implement a, a a routine lifestyle that that puts you first and allows you to be self aware and just you know, yeah, uh, take care of yourself. Just yeah, take care of you. Yeah. Like, before we close, how, what what are some of the things you do uh, as it relates to self care? What does your regimen um, look like? Honestly, as an artist, it's kind of weird because sometimes my free time gets taken up by like work. Mm-hmm. So like, what well, I could couldn't like, I could be working on the video, I could be editing, I could be doing stuff like that. But the self care for me is like kicking up, watching a movie or something, like painting, getting something to eat. Yeah. Like that's I think that's been the one like going and getting something to eat and like maybe eating outside stuff like yep. that yeah that's yeah. that's definitely been like some some good self-care because i love being outside like yeah. i can't okay. give that up that's something i've been doing a lot more since the pandemic has happened as well just more outdoor activities yeah sure sure you know i definitely appreciate the fact that things that we may have uh, minimized or taken for granted now become especially important like just going out in the backyard and get some fresh air literally yeah literally that hey hey brother miles i know people when they hear this podcast are going to be interested in reaching out to you to possibly have some more dialogue for her maybe they would want to secure a contract with you to to help them with some photography or some creative stuff where can mm-hmm. people reach you how, how do people follow up with you um you can follow my instagram at shoot miles s-h-o-o-t-m-y-l-e-s pretty much most of my work will be up there i have a link to my portfolio and all that stuff so People can take a look, send me a quick message. If you want to do something, we can make anything happen, um, any project I'm up for. Could you repeat the website one more time, please? It's going to be on Instagram, at ShootMiles, S-H-O-O-T-M-Y-L-E-S. Well, Miles, I appreciate your time, man. This has been very informative, uh, good discussion. We'd love to have you back perhaps at another time. Uh, hopefully, Absolutely. When we get beyond this pandemic, we can have a different kind of discussion about how we successfully overcame. Tell your family, uh, I say hello. We wish you and your family uh, continued success and continued good health. And to our listeners out there, until next time, be safe and be well.